Welcome back to the video darkroom. Can you use your professional equipment for your hobby? If you're running a photography business or a videography business, you'll have a certain amount of professional kit. And some people also have photography or video as a hobby. Is it suitable to use the same equipment that you use for your professional business for your own hobby? That's what we're going to get into in this video and I'm going to show you some techniques so that you can tell whether or not you have the right kit for your hobby, whether you need to maybe change out some pieces of kit and also I'm going to show you how you can look through the metadata of the history of your hobby and find out what kit you ideally need for that. And I'm also going to um, tell you just that I'm going to make a change to the equipment that I use. I'm going to tell you how I decided on that. And then in a subsequent video, I can look back and see how well that change of kit turned out to be and whether it supports my hobby of uh, street photography, uh, landscape and cityscape work and see how well it, it suits that for the future. My business is mainly video production covering areas like events and interviews and that occasionally gets me into other areas such as um, property, real estate and product and I do a certain amount of photography for work as well. In my videography business I tend to use prime lenses mostly and those would be things like the 24mm uh, G Master um, lens that's on this um, Sony a7S Mark III and maybe the 35 or the 50 millimeter G Masters and um, because that gives me the kind of really limited depth of field and good bouquet that I need to make those particular scenes work out as best possible. I do also use the GM 24 to 70 that I have here on my Sony A1 and uh, when I'm using this for videography it's really only at the wide end of the spectrum running it at about 24 millimeters so um, it's not often that I use the 24 to 70 at the high end for videography however when I'm on a photography assignment things change a little bit if it's an event, I often use the 24 to 70 for the closer up work and use a 70 to 200 G Master for the uh, longer range um, where, where I need to photograph maybe from a little bit further away. So the 24 to 70 works really well on the Sony A1 because it's a 50 megapixel camera and that gives me um, the ability to go right up to the 70 millimeters and then maybe switch on to APS-C mode or if we're talking about video or to crop in a little bit if we're talking about photography. The issue that I have when I come to use this setup, the A1 and the 24 to 70 for my personal work is that it weighs a lot. It weighs um, just short of 1.7 kilograms, which is about four pounds. And that's fine for professional work, but it gets pretty heavy if you're carrying it about all day for some street photography or landscape work. So I'm looking for something that is a bit lighter than that. But I want to see what it is that I use most in terms of lenses and in terms of focal length to see whether or not it makes it would make sense for me to change out this um, G Master 24 to 70 for something else. Now, the 24 to 70 is not only heavy, it's also incredibly expensive. And there is another lens that Sony has out at the moment, which is the 24 to 50 f 2.8 G lens, which costs less than half the price of the 24 to 70. It's still not cheap, but at less than half the price, I can make a trade in of this lens for the 24 to 50 and probably have some money left over. But first of all, let's just have a look how you can use the metadata to determine what are the focal lengths that are really important to you. And that will give you the information as to whether or not changing lenses um, or using something different for your personal work will be a useful way forward. I'm going to do that in Lightroom. So get let's get into Lightroom now and have a look. We're in Lightroom and 
were in my catalog that I use for my hobby based work because I maintain two catalogs, one for my business and one for my personal work. I like to keep them separate and that's useful on this occasion because we can analyze separately the lenses and focal lengths that I use for each, for my personal and for my business use. So in order to do that, we go to metadata and I have set up four panels. You can change the metadata that you want to display in each of the panels by just clicking on the metadata label at the top of the panel. Here I'm going to select just the last three years of work here. And um, that gives me about 2000 images to review the metadata for. And in the next panel, and um, the second panel, you can see all the different cameras that I have used. So I'm going to pick my Sony A1, which is ILCE-1. And I, there are 726 images to analyze here. And once we have selected it down to just the images that have been shot with that camera, we can then move on to the third panel, which shows the lenses that have been used to shoot those images with that camera. And you can see that there's quite a lot of them I've shot with the uh, 35 millimeter um, lens, uh, but we're going to look and narrow down on the FE 24 to 70 G Master lens. And as soon as I select that, it shows all the images that have been shot with that particular lens. And the interesting thing is that in the fourth panel where I have focal length, you can see the different focal lengths that I have primarily used with that lens. You can see immediately that of the 93 images that have been shot with that lens, 41 of them have been shot at 24 millimeters. So basically around 50% of the images that have been shot have all been shot at the wide end with that lens. And then there's a, a distribution of different focal lengths used going right up to 60 millimeters and then a number just 15 shot at 70 millimeters. What I learned from that is that in my personal work, first of all, I don't use that lens very often. The reason being it's so heavy to carry around. So it's not my first choice of lens. And the second thing is that even when I do use it, most of the photography that I do is shot at the wide end with that particular lens. I've put these figures for both my personal catalogue and my business catalogue into Excel so that you can have a look and see just how that works out. We're in Excel and I have here the chart for my business photography. I, I keep a separate Lightroom catalog for business and personal, which enables me to review them both separately here. So this is the um, business usage of that 24 to 70 lens. You can see I've shot 719 images over the past couple of years with that particular lens, most of them at the short end um, and a number of them right out at the 70 millimeter um, range. And if we go then to my personal usage, um, you can see there on the chart that we have uh, again the same pattern of most of them being shot at the 24 end and quite a number being shot at the 70 end. So the same kind of pattern of usage. Now my thought is that given that I'm using the Sony A1, which is 50 megapixels, and for video work, I can switch to APS-C mode. Then if I change the lens and use the new Sony 24 to 50 millimeter lens, then if I switch to APS-C mode with that lens, I can um, go to 50 millimeters and an APS-C mode that will give me a crop factor of 1.5, which will effectively give me a 75 millimeter lens. So I can basically cover what I need with that 24 to 50, given the high resolution on the Sony A1. And the same is true both in my personal and business use. But the huge advantage to me is that the 24 to 50 is really compact. It's about the same size as the G Master 35s and 24 millimeter lenses. And um, so it makes the whole camera and lens combination much easier to use on a personal basis for landscape, cityscape and street photography. 
So I've ordered the new lens and I'm going to trade in my old 24 to 70 and I'm going to create another video to let you know just how I got on with that new combination. So if you'd like to see the comparison of my experience with the Sony 24 to 50 millimeter lens compared with the 24 to 70 millimeter lens, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you'll be notified when that video is released. And if you find anything useful in this video and enjoyed it, then please give it a like. It will help the channel greatly. So thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.